Hello. Um, hi. Um, so thank you for uh, for having a look again at our webinar this week, um, where every week we're kind of trying to uh, to touch on a few different topics, um, always kind of surrounding uh, Lima Charlie, and um, you know for for those kind of less aware around what Lima Charlie is. So we are a uh, cloud uh, security infrastructure as a service. Um, so. We allow you to kind of uh, deploy in the cloud security infrastructure with EDR as a, as a basis. So today, what specifically uh, we wanted to talk about was the um, the resources that are available to somebody starting uh, with Lima Charlie, and that are um, that are free essentially. So. You know, very often um, as we uh, we onboard people, um, there's always the question around um, what can I get up and running with very quickly with minimal effort. Um, you, Lima Charlie provides a, a huge amount of, uh, of power and customization um, and kind of really being able to, get, uh, you know, own the detections and develop them and, and decide how they're applied and how, you know, automation works. Um, but very often, for somebody who wants to try Lima Charlie, uh, you know, we want something that's just going to um, come up and uh, and you know work and give you give you some value and kind of learn from there um, on what that looks like. So, um, with this in mind, we have uh, kind of a list of different resources. We're going to go over you know what they are, what they'll give you. Um, a little bit of information around the flavor, you know, how, how to use them and, and, uh, and the type of value that they give you. So to start, uh, here's what we're going to do. We are going to go in here. All right. So um, there's a, a couple of different ca categories of things that, um, that you can use to get up and running. So what the first one is, um, you know, obviously, you know, as you get set up, um, create an organization, Lima Charlie, so it comes with a free tier of two sensors as well. So it's very useful to just kind of try and get up and running. Um, the way that it works is that by default, you know, you can think of it like AWS or Google Cloud Platform, is that, uh, you know, it's infrastructure that we make available. So by default, nothing is applied, nothing is going to automatically uh, work for you. It's kind of a blank slate. Obviously, uh, you know, if you're an MSSP um, or, or a larger organization, uh, you know, you might have your, your kind of uh, uh, infrastructure as code configuration files that you can apply to your organizations. And, you know, you'll, you'll have a good, uh, a good uh, base there. However, um, if you're just starting and you know you just want to start using a few things, um, the way that generally it works is that you will want to go into the add-ons section and you will subscribe to things. So things could be uh, services, um, they could be lookups, they could be APIs. And by subscribing to them, um, depending on what that resource is, that add-on that you're subscribing to, either things will happen automatically for you um, or in some cases, you'll have to, uh, it will just give you access to those things. And then you'll have to add, you know, a few things, usually DNR rules, detection and response rules um, that we've covered in, in our previous webinar to leverage those resources that you're using. So we're going to start by um, talking about the, the free ones um, and the ones that, uh, not the free ones, pardon me, but really the ones that um, will automatically take effect and do things for you. So there's really um, two big ones in that category. <clears throat> so uh, those are called services in the uh, in the add-ons. Add-ons resources, we'll use those two names a bit interchangeably. Um, but uh, services, which we've also covered in a previous webinar, um, tend to, uh, to kind of bring two things together for you. Um, the resource itself, the add-on itself, so like a threat feed or, or rules, and the DNR rules, uh, the detection and response rules, so applying those to your organizations. So the first one to talk about is uh, Sigma. So uh, Sigma is an open source um, 
language that is agnostic of uh, of where it gets run. It allows you to do, for example, uh, searches, you know, in 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 various products, and um, for various types of behavior. Um, and uh, they support multiple what they call backends. So essentially, you know, translations of the of the rules. Um, they have a repository where people contribute hundreds and hundreds of rules looking for you know various bad things. And um, there is a backend for Lima Charlie that allows you to take a Sigma rule, convert it to Lima Charlie. And yes, that's useful. That's an open source uh, repo. Um, however, what's even more useful is the Sigma service. And essentially what that is, is that in a continuous uh, integration and deployment uh, fashion, we mirror those rules in Lima Charlie, convert them to DNR rules for Lima Charlie. And by subscribing to the Sigma service, we always continuously update those into your organization. So by clicking subscribe, you get access to a huge list. Um, if you want to see uh, you know, the, the, the project itself, here's the URL. Um, so it's on GitHub. You can go have a look. Uh, the rules, everything gets updated there. If you want to have a look at um, how those rules get translated into Lima Charlie, into DNR rules, um, this is the actual prod repo um, that is hooked into the CICD pipeline. Um, and these are the Lima Charlie DNR rules that are converted and that will get applied in your organization. So sometimes even you might get a hit, you know, a detection on one of those rules and you want to know exactly, you know, what is this looking for? Um, you can start by looking at the Lima Charlie rules. So that's you know exactly what's going to be running on your on your organization. Uh, and if you want, you can go upstream to the uh, you know the Sigma rule, and you can even uh, you know do PRs, uh, so uh, pull requests to uh, to suggest updates or maybe false positives and all that. So um, that uh, that is the uh, the Sigma service. So just click enable it. And then uh, within a couple of minutes, everything will kind of get mirrored within your organization and you will get detections. It's worth noting that um, like all things in security, um, especially when you're talking about generic things um, in the detection world, you will get false positives of some kind. Um, we, you know, we don't control Sigma, so we really just mirror it. Um, and uh, what that means is that as you enable Sigma, you should kind of mentally be ready that you will want to create a couple of uh, false positive rules. Now, it's it's impossible to really kind of, uh, you know, pre not prevent, but pre-plan those. Uh, so really what you want to do is do a, a progressive rollout, enable the Sigma service, see what false positives come through, create a couple of rules, and very, very quickly, you'll kind of eliminate the things that you know, are of interest and that Sigma kind of has roles for maybe detecting, um, I don't know, you know, the truncation of Windows event files, um, but that perhaps in your organization or on specific hosts, they're normal. So you'll want to have a, a false positive rule set there. Um, the second big useful service is the OTX. So OTX is the, uh, the open threat exchange exchange uh, and that is from uh, alien vault so alien vault um, has the system OTX um, where people can contribute uh, what they call pulses um, and those are you know essentially for specialized threat feeds so you might have a pulse for a specific botnet or something like that uh, you can as part of OTX, uh, you know, you can create an account that's free. You can register for those pulse, uh, pulses. In Lima Charlie, um, if you want to use the OTX service, um, the, the, the prereq is that you will go in the integrations section um, and you will want to add your API key there. So the API key is going to be provided by, uh, by OTX. You go in integrations, add your key there subscribe to the OTX service. And uh, what's going to happen is that automatically um, the OTX service will go using the API, find all of the pulses that you're you have registered to and uh, import those in Lima Charlie. And it also has uh, DNR rules, so detection response rules, 
um, that are generic for the various types of pulses. So if a pulse is like hashes or um, you know domain names, it will create the relevant rule to look for you know to match those those feeds with the data coming from your endpoints in Lima Charlie. So for example, um, if you have a feed that are hashes. Um, it will look for those in the code identity event, um, which contain you know a bunch of different forms of uh, of the hashes. There is a maximum number of pulse. Um, again, kind of remember that in uh, in Lima Charlie, um, everything that we do is uh, is done wire speed, meaning um, when you have a DNR rule, it must be able to run in real time. You know, it's not something that we can go and say, okay, look at the past year of data and um, you know, uh, start parsing that kind of in real time. That's just not possible. Um, so uh, we have services that allow you to do that, like the replay service, if you want to do that specifically, uh, replay old historical telemetry. But in this case, we limit it to about 200 pulses where we grab all of the indicators of compromise in there, convert them to feed, add DNR rules, and apply them automatically to your organization. So those are very uh, hands-off ways to kind of you know get started with a bunch of different rules uh, a bunch of a bunch of different threat feeds um and uh, yeah just get up and going the others um that we'll mention uh the, what differentiates them so those will be uh apis and feeds is that they're essentially threat feeds or, or apis that you get access to but then you have to write a small dnr rule that will leverage it the reason that uh, that we do it this way, that those are not, you know, one click apply everywhere, is that uh, in some cases, uh, you know, for example, the, the, the first one, the virus total one, uh, if you have a paying virus total subscription with a paying key, you may not want to query all of the hashes in, in the same way across, you know, your whole organization, but maybe you want to say, you know, for, for my general population of hosts, um, if, you know, uh, 10 antivirus engines for virus total say this is bad, then I want to report it. But I have, you know, a production network. And then the production network, if even one uh, engine from virus total says this is bad, I want to generate a detection. And having to uh, those DNR rules is what allows you to kind of make that customization. So let's uh, let's go through through that list. We have uh, so the first one I mentioned, virus total. Um, it's free to get a uh, an API key. So uh, feel free to just go. You can register, get an API key. It has limits. So there's a certain daily limit uh, as well as a certain limit per minute. Um, you, in the same way uh, as the OTX, you have to go into the integrations. Um, and uh, add your API key. Once um, you do that, you can um, register to the API virus total, again, from the add -on. And that gives you access to specifically say, take this hash and query it against virus total. Now, there's a few things that are worth noting. So because, um, you know, again, you know, we run wire speed um, and this is an external API and there are sometimes limits on, you know, in your API key. It means that this must be done in a best effort way. And what that translates into, you know, practically speaking is if you have a DNR rule that says take all the hashes coming from code identity events, so kind of deduplicated hashes, and you want to look them up against VT, as we do this lookup in real time, if let's say virus total is down somehow, but it should be extremely rare, um, what's going to happen is this is going to silently just skip, keep going. Um, part of the logic here is that you usually, again, it all depends on the specific scenarios, but uh, you know the code identity event will reoccur uh, because the uh, they're deduplicated per host per reboot per day, if I recall. So you're likely going to get that, that again. Um, alternatively, let's say that your key uh, has hit the maximum uh, of, of, I think the free is four per minute. Um, what's going to happen is that again, we will just skip over it and keep going. Now, uh, 
that is uh, that's not great. And I mean, there's a bunch of different ways that you know you can get a, a bigger key. Um, you know, all of these things. Um, realistically, um, one uh, interesting feature uh, that we have in the image Charlie for the virus total API that really makes this a lot easier is that um, we do a lot of caching. So as all of those things, uh, as all of those hashes get looked up uh, in, in virus total, we cache those locally uh, for a certain period of time. And what that means is um, that if you're getting 100,000 hashes from your organization, it's extremely unlikely that you're going to be doing 100,000 virus total lookup. Um, because the first time that one of your hosts resolves you know, when I net that DLL, th that hash, uh, that will get cached. And the next time that we see that hash again, we're not going to query virus total, but instead we're going to short circuit all of this and give you the cached results extremely quickly. So in practice, you kind of end up uh, getting a lot more uh, mileage out of the VT integration in Lima Charlie uh, than strictly considering the, the quota that you have on your API key. Um, so that's really kind of the main API that, hey, you enable that free key, um, you're up and running and, and you get kind of a lot of value very quickly from that. The others are threat feeds. So, so you know, VT is an API. Um, these are lookups. So you'll see that lookups are a, uh, you know, a subset of the, the, the resources, the add-ons that you can subscribe to. A lookup is very, very simply just a list, a list of values, um, a key, and then a value. When you want to query something from Lima Charlie, let's say hashes or domain names or IPs, um, you take the IP that you see in an event and you say, is that IP in this list of bad IPs? Um, there's metadata associated with you know, that entry. So if it is in that list, then you're going to have you know, details about what does that mean? Where is that IP coming from? Um, and the match that will be produced, so the detection, the alert that will be produced will contain that metadata. So in Lima Charlie, um, we mirror a whole bunch of different uh, threat feeds. So uh, some of them are, so they're, they're all public free threat feeds, like uh, Talos IP blacklist, um, Alien Vault, uh, public IP reputation, um, abuse.ch uh, also has a, a bunch of different um, feeds that are kind of specialized for various things. So those will be mirrored. But there's also community feeds. So um, for example, we have uh, the global hash and the crimeware IPs feeds um, that have been added recently uh, from uh, Sox Otter, which is an MSSP using Lima Charlie. Um, and they are they and anybody else is able to kind of create those feeds um, and make them public on Lima Charlie. So in their case, I believe they're updating those every four hours from various sources that they have. Um, you'll see some information around, uh, you know, in in the uh, in the add-on section, some information about what those are. And you just click subscribe, and that gives your organization access to those. Now, uh, both for APIs and lookups, uh, I've kind of mentioned, uh, you know, that's, that's half of the equation. Getting access to it is half the equation. The other half is um, actually doing, um, doing the lookups for those. So doing the actual lookup, uh, you have to create the DNR rule. Uh, don't be scared, <laughs> that's very easy. And specifically, um, we're going to give you uh, four examples here because they're usually very generic, at least to begin with, until you want to, uh, to really you know, customize it. So um, let's start with virus total in the same order that, that we did this. So virus total, um, the, uh, the logical way that you want to query it against virus total is fairly straightforward. So um, we want to do a, uh, pardon me. So we want to do a lookup. So that's the operation for our rule. Um, the type uh, of events that we want to do the lookup from is code identity, so deduplicated hashes. Um, we want to to uh, do the lookup based on uh, on the main hash. 
in Lima Charlie, uh, if you see a hash, the generic form of the hash is always SHA-256. Um, code identity also has uh, MD5 and SHA-1. In this case, we'll just simplify and just look up the SHA-256. The resource, so what we want to look up against is, so LCR, Lima Charlie resource, colon slash slash, so like a URL, uh, API, VT. So we want to query the virus total API. Uh, so, you know, the first part at the top here is saying, take the code identities, take the hash, query them on VT. The second part here at the bottom is where we say, okay, not only do I want to query VT, uh, but I want to, uh, you know, decide the threshold. So virus total returns to you the number or, or the list of antivirus engines that it supports that have detected this hash as being malicious in some form. So in this case, we're defining a metadata rule, which just says, hey, whatever comes back from the VT API, I want to apply this sub rule to this. And it's super straightforward. In this case, we're saying, I want to say if the uh, the length of, so it's a list, again, it's the list of, of uh, antiviruses that say this is bad. So if the length of that list is greater than three, consider that a match. So taken as a whole, this rule here will very simply look up all the hashes coming from code identities. And if there's more than three AV engines saying this is bad, generate your detection. Simple as that. You can customize this, obviously. Uh, you know, you could have like a top level rule that looks for a sensor tag. So maybe you want to only do those VT lookups for um, you know, agents that are tagged uh, VIP, for example, it's my go-to example, um, or, uh, you know, change the threshold. Um, you could also end this, you know, with various other clauses. Um, the second one, so we'll move to the, the second kind of generic list, and it's for IP lookups. So a, a bunch of the feeds, you know, the lookups that are in, in Lima Charlie are for IP addresses. So this is a generic rule where we uh, will say, okay, we want to do a lookup. Um, it, the events are network connections. So network connections event is a um, slightly, um, uh, slightly batched together list of network connections per process that occur. If I recall, it's every 30 seconds or something like that. So it's just more efficient and it's what is enabled by default. Um, you know, if you don't customize the, the types of events you want to get from your endpoints. So again, this is meant kind of as a, a quick default that will work out of the box. Um, and I want to take uh, event network activity um, question mark here. The question mark, it, it represents, you know, tells the DNR rule to ignore whether it's a source of destination. We just treat it all. You know, I want all IP addresses from this and, and take the IP address again. Um, those will, you know, we don't really care if they're IPv6, IPv4. We're going to assume that the, the feed in uh, Alien Vault IP reputation, is, this example, um, contains perhaps both. Um, it doesn't matter if, if, you know, we get an IPv6 from the event and it queries that threat feed. It's just not going to find it. No problem. No harm done. So this will, uh, and, and I guess, yes, the resource. So again, LCR, Lima Charlie resource. Lookup, so it's a different type. It's not an API type. It's a lookup type, and Alien Vault IP reputation, which is the name of the resource we subscribe to. So if you enable that, um, you create that uh, that DNR rule. Uh, obviously, that's kind of the detection part. On the the response part, you can just create you know action report uh, name and then name uh, that of the detection that you want to generate. Uh, extremely straightforward. Um, so that's for IPs, domains, I, the other you know very common type of threat feed that uh, that will query. In this example, we're using uh, the malware domains uh, feed that we will look for, um, and we say that okay again look up against DNS requests. Very obvious. The domain name within those requests straightforward. Um, normalize all this to lowercase, um, you know, to, to kind of uh, normalize because we don't care about case and domains and um, and query malware domains. And that's it. 
uh, you know, those are, there's only really one location for DNS requests that get uh, produced, you know, from, from uh, Mac, Windows, Chrome, um, they're all normalized. So it's a straightforward rule like that. Finally, um, for hashes, you'll see that it's a little bit similar to the virus total one, except we, we've added a tiny bit of complexity here. So uh, this example, we're using the lookup global hash. So that's um, that's uh, the big uh, feed provided by Soxotter and Lima Charlie. And the reason it's slightly more complex is because we want to look up, uh, we know that it's a mix of hash types. So we want to look up the SHA-56, the MD5, and the SHA-1 of all the code identities that we get. So to do that, we make the top level of our DNR rule an OR. So because we're going to essentially take three different rules and just say if one of them, A or B or C matches, consider that, that a match. We only care about code identity event that contains all those hashes. Um, and as I said, we're going to OR those three rules. And again, those three rules we're saying, look up the hash or the hash MD5 or the hash SHA-1 against uh, this specific resource. So against that thread feed. As straightforward as this, um, once you do that, you know, you just do report or whatever that is and uh, you're, you're good to go. So uh, that's kind of the, the overview. Um, what I can, uh, yeah, so, so that's really kind of the overview of um, the main forms of, uh, you know, of capabilities that you can get out of Lima Charlie uh, very quickly out of the box without having to put your own feeds, without having to create your own resources. Obviously, um, those are also free, but there's, uh, there's a few non-free resources, for example, we produce a cutting edge um, uh, feed as well um, that you can use um, that kind of contain very, uh, very cutting edge uh, uh, forms of like a threat feed. So hashes, IPs, domains um, that, uh, that we also update very frequently. Um, you can obviously also feel free to, uh, to create your own. So you can not only create your own lookup, for example, of a threat feed, um, that is private or public. You can make it public if you want. Um, and if you're interested also in providing some feeds, um, but you know, perhaps you're, you have a, a threat intel shop that is producing uh, very high quality feeds or very specialized feeds, um, you can get in touch with us. And we're also able to put, uh, you know, put your feed in a public, but in a public uh, paying fashion through uh, through the Lima Charlie, uh, you know, small marketplace. So that um, if somebody wants to subscribe to it, they can do it and it works exactly the same way, uh, except that they'll be, you know, billed per endpoint per month usually. And, uh, and it's as straightforward as that. So um, it, it, this tends to be a bit more of a straightforward topic. Um, so I, I know that we, you know, we have a pretty strong delay again on, um, on the stream. Um, so, you know, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, uh, to put them in the chat. I'll wait a little bit uh, more. Um, otherwise, go for it. Uh, you know, uh, create a Lima Charlie account. It's free. Create an org. It's free. It has a two free sensor tier. So, uh, you know, there's kind of no real reason not to, um, to, you know, get playing with it, develop some roles, um, see, uh, you know, the, the types of events, the types of telemetry that you get back from Lima Charlie. Um, you know, in some ways you can use Lima Charlie, uh, you know, almost for detonation, um, you know, in the VM, if you want to see the, the detailed behavior of what's going on. And um, yeah, that's it. Uh, I guess I should note also that there's there's another type of, of, uh, of resource that you can use, which is the detections. Um, and what those are, it, you know, it's a DNR rule. It's, it's the detection half of a DNR rule, just like this. Um, and you can subscribe to them. And if you look in our documentation, you can create yourself a rule that embeds this, um, this kind of encapsulated rule. Um, it's a little bit less straightforward, um, but we also have, you know, some, uh, some detections that are made public that you can uh, just apply to your organization uh, as well. Cool. So I, I don't think uh, I don't think there's really any questions. Um, if there are, 
feel free to uh, get in touch with us again, uh, very approachable. Uh, there's also the, the public Slack community at the bottom of our main webpage that you can get access to. Um, and we, uh, you know, we answer questions, the community answer questions. You can get in touch with us in a, in a semi-private way as well. Um, cool. All right. Well, thanks. See you around.